I think I did, but it's already doing the, it can't focus on me, but whatever, it's fine. Am I live? Here's the question. Am I live or is it Memorex? <laughs> no one remembers those questions. Oh, maybe this light over here. I'll bring it over. Okay. Is that help? Oh, the chat room. Where is chat, chat, chat? Oh, no, that's not the chat room. I ha There it is. Is that open? Yeah. Oh, I see the Velociraptor from Ivan. Uh, so Ivan is in the uh, hizzle. Uh, Alepe is in the hizzle saying, hi, Dr. Boyer. Um, and Ivan says the volume is a bit low. Is that this one here? I can't imagine it's been changed. Yeah, we can... How about this, Ivan? Is that better? Let me know if it's too low for you, Ivan. Uh, and Alepe and hit her McGee. First time chatter from Resec. Seven, two. Uh, two, seven, two, seven, two. Okay. Uh, uh, can you hear me? And okay, you can hear me. Can you hear, can everyone in the chat room hear me and see me? Is this working in other words? Uh, and I believe it probably is because someone said the volume, I even said the volume was too low. Okay. Uh, uh, hitter also says the volume is too low. Well, I'm not sure where else to adjust that. How about this? How about that? And how about I just keep cranking it up? How's the volume sound now? Give me one more volume check. Check one. Check, check, check. Check two. Check three. Uh, first time chatter from Emma's 2112 says, yes. First time chatters from Danny Shoop. First time chatters from EJ Chamberlain. Uh, Ivan says, we can see you. First time chatter from Mini Bam Bam. <laughs> and Resec... Uh, Resec a 272 says volume is dialed. Does that mean good or bad? I just, I just upped it. Okay. I upped it on all the things I could up it. Here's the thing, friends. I'm naturally loud as hell, so I can just up my own volume if you like. I can also bring the microphone better. Check, check, test, check, check. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Danny Shoop says first person to get my last name right first time. You know it, Danny. I'm all about it. Okay, so uh, for those first timers, thank you for your first time chatting. And I do have to, uh, well, first I should uh, introduce myself. I think everyone here knows who I am. This is John Boyer, Professor John Boyer, here at Virginia Tech, home of the Fighting Hokies, one for one so far this semester. <laughs> Uh, and the instructor of note, instructor of record, I should say, the instructor of record for one world regional geography, a.k.a. world regions here at Virginia Tech, uh, a single semester class that spans the entire globe, usually unsuccessfully, but we do what we can in a single semester. So, uh, uh, and of course, Virginia Tech, the greatest university east of the Mississippi. So, first time chatter from uh, Jessica uh, GZ1 says the volume is good, and everyone says the volume is better. So, it sounds like everybody can hear my sounds now. So, I do have to apologize. I assume everyone who's currently hanging out with us uh, is in the uh, fall 2022 semester of World Regions here at Virginia Tech. That would be the 20 double deuce for those of uh, you who know my terminology uh, for what year it is. The year of the double deuce, and uh, my apology is that, man, I have absolutely sucked this semester at interacting here on live. Uh, a Twitch, I've not done any office hours outside of week one. And all of a sudden, it was this morning, I, a student or two had hit me up saying, hey, when are we doing Twitch again? Hey, when are you doing office hours? Hey, have we had a flash quiz yet? And lo and behold, to my utter embarrassment and chagrin, I have not done anything for going on a month. And so my apologies. It's been one heck of a busy semester. Uh, that's no excuse because I am your instructor and I am here to teach you and help you understand stuff. So I can't apologize enough and I will try to do better. Uh, 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 Bogey Boy in the house saying, glad to see you again, Professor. Good to see you again, Bogey Boy. And uh, 
I don't have a specific shtick to run by you tonight in the class email I sent out. I did mention that many people for two weeks now have said, Yo, Boyer Dude, what is up? The Queen is dead. Oh my gosh. End of days. What's going on? Is this going to affect the whole world? Not really, but uh, it is a significant passing of a significant figure that will have some repercussions across the planet, although pretty minimal, quite frankly. Uh, and the email that I sent out to the class earlier, I said, uh, office hours tonight, death of the queen, dot, dot, dot. Is it more about death of a system? Ah! What would the system be? Well, the system would be constitutional monarchy, and particularly for the case of the United Kingdom, uh, is it the death of monarchy for them specifically, but also is it the death of something called the Commonwealth? The Commonwealth! Whoops, not trying to show too much skin there. The Commonwealth countries. Uh, I moved all the glasses, so yeah, there aren't any. <laughs> Uh, but there's plenty of pint glasses. There might be some somewhere else. So uh, what do I mean by all that? Well, before I get into that specifically, uh, Ivan saying, I hope you are doing great uh, today, Professor. I am. Thank you, Ivan. I hope you're doing well yourself. Uh, are there other things that uh, you all want to talk about? The Queen's death has been on everybody's mind. Uh, again, not because it really affects anything. It's almost more of a pomp and circumstance situation that Queen Elizabeth II has been uh, in charge in charge of the United Kingdom for 70 years. So it's kind of a big deal for everyone on planet Earth. And by everyone, I mean people in China know she this woman died. People in South Africa know this woman died. People in Brazil know this woman died. People here in Virginia know this woman died. None of those people are directly affected by this woman. So why is it a big deal? Uh, mostly because everyone knows this woman died. And what I mean by that, it's part of popular culture. So this woman, Queen Elizabeth II, has been around and in the public eye for Ever. I was going to say for a really long time, but let's face it, it's forever. Because I'm old. I'm super old, like building my coffin old. You guys are half my age, if not younger than that. But all of us know who this woman is. And this woman has been in charge of a country for longer than I've been alive. Let me make that clear to you. She's not been alive longer than I've been alive. She's been the head of state of a country longer than I've been alive. She's been the head of state in, in charge of a country for longer than my mother has been alive. I mean, just think about that. And I'm old and my mother's really old. So this woman is super old and it's not her age. It's that she's been in charge of a sovereign state for longer than 95% of humans who are currently living have been alive. So it's more of a pop cultural phenomena than really anything that affects our daily lives. So she's been around so long, everyone knows her, everyone's heard of her. It's the Queen, God Save the Queen, the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen. There's now been Netflix shows and Amazon shows about this woman uh, very recently, actually, because everybody's been waiting for her to die for so long. They started making documentaries about her in her whatever it was, something Jubilee, Silver Jubilee, Platinum Jubilee, which marked her 65 or 70 years of, of ruling last year. Yes, Katie just pointed out that when this woman uh, was in charge, in charge, I keep doing it in air quotes, which usually annoys people, including myself, in charge uh, of Great Britain, the first prime minister that she was the queen over was Winston Churchill, a, a, a man who's been dead longer than I've been alive and who I've only ever seen black and white photographs of. So it, it, it starts to boggle the mind of like, wait a minute, how is this woman alive? Did, what, is she immortal? Is she a vampire? Did I see her on True Blood? I think she was in an episode with Eric the Viking. So... 
Was she part of Twilight or, or True Blood? I can't remember. So, um, uh, or Lost Boys, my favorite vampire movie. You know what? Let's give a shout out to the chat room. Favorite vampire movie and or series of all time. Let's hear it from the room. First time chatter from uh, Rao X TV. What about the invasion of Armenia? Rao X TV, I don't even know what you're referring to right there. Let me open up my browser window and see if... Armenia was recently invaded in the last five minutes since I started doing <laughs> this podcast. I don't see that that invasion has happened, but try to put this in context. Uh, your grandmothers and grandfathers and great grandmothers and great grandfathers knew who this woman was and may have been children when she took over <laughs> took over a country. So, again, I keep stressing, I've said it 10 times now, it's not that this woman, uh, th it, she's a human being. It's not that this human being actually has any real impact over our lives. It's that she's been an institution in and of herself for so long. Everyone on planet Earth knows who she is, so it's kind of like, huh, it's interesting. And there's actually no parallel. There is no one I can compare this to. Let me think about this for two and a half seconds. Okay, there, there's a couple of people that I could reference. Katie actually shouted out the Pope. I disagree. Uh, in her lifetime, there's been eight Popes. So Popes come and go. but And Popes are only particularly important for Catholics, although they're international figures. The Dalai Lama has been around as long as Queen Elizabeth II. But the Dalai Lama, uh, most people on planet Earth probably still don't know who the Dalai Lama is. They, again, they pro a lot, most of us know of the Dalai Lama, but we don't know the daily workings of the Dalai Lama like we know the daily workings of Queen Elizabeth. And the Dalai Lama has never been in control of a country. And the Dalai Lama has never affected foreign policy of any country. So... Uh, and the Dalai Lama has been vilified by the Chinese so badly in the last 20 years that most countries don't even recognize the Dalai Lama anymore. So the Dalai Lama is a good one. I, I got you. But even that doesn't apply as well. Uh, oh, my gosh. I got so many comments from Alipay. My grandmother told stories about her working in the field of hospitals pre being a queen or her sister. Not sure. Actually, Alipay, I think it was both her and her sister worked in field hospitals during World War II. Or maybe it was World War I. Who knows? It's so, They're so old. Uh, Jessica says, was never a big fan of vampires, but everyone loves the vampire diaries. Good one. Uh, Midnight Mass. Actually, uh, uh, Hitter McGee. I've not heard of Midnight Mass. Thank you, Hitter McGee. I'm going to go watch that all night tonight. Uh, Elongton says, Fidel Castro. That's a decent comparison. A decent comparison. But let me put it in context. Queen Elizabeth II was in power at least twice as long as Fidel Castro. Uh, I might be pushing it, but I'm going to say about twice as long. Uh, he did affect a lot of things too, but mostly in our hemisphere. That's a good one. I like that. Fidel's probably the best one I, I would have come up with as well. Uh, 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 Emma calls out uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Everybody tells me to watch What We Do in the Shadows. I still have not got around to it. Thank you for that. I will watch that one, Emma's. Um, motorcycle Diaries. Alipay says, Motorcycle Diaries is very good. I know. I love that movie. That's why I keep using it. First Time Chatters from Logan Kelly says, Castlevania is a good show. Is that the animated one where it's like a group of people that's that was based on like a podcast with a group of folks that did like first, first player, first role, whatever you call it, like D&D? &D? I don't even... Tell me what that is, Logan Kelly. I think it's an animated show that I've watched a couple episodes of. So, yes. Um, so the one that I was going to come up with, and again, this is only um, a thank you first time chatter from Keisha. Keisha V. Goyal says, it is anime. Uh, the one that I was going to mention that would be of rough approximation in, in international recognition uh, and impact was Vladimir Putin. Now, Vladimir Putin, actually, uh, even though he is like uh, completely interwoven into the fabric of pop culture and international politics and just current events, 
at every level across planet Earth. Everyone on planet Earth also knows who Vladimir Putin is. Everyone on planet Earth knows who Vladimir Putin is. Groundhogs in Mongolia can recognize him on sight. Uh, however, he's actually only been in power exactly 23 years. Why do I say exactly 23 years? Because I was teaching class exactly 23 years ago when he took power and I did a podcast about him. I take that back. There was no such thing as podcast 23 years ago. I did this thing we call lectures. I did a lecture about him 23 years ago when he took power and did a whole thing of like, who the hell is this guy, Vladimir Putin? So even Vladimir Putin has only been in power, let me do the rough math, one fourth of the amount of time that Queen Elizabeth II was in power. So if Vladimir Putin lasts another 50 years, which he might because I've actually said for years I think he's a vampire, that feels like a quiz question. I'm pretty sure Vladimir Putin is a vampire. Uh, even if, if he were to last another 50 years, he would have the same caliber impact that the Queen Elizabeth II's passing has had. However, Vladimir Putin is a much more active world leader, much more impacting current events. Yeah, Queen Elizabeth II was a figurehead leader. Vladimir Putin is a real brick and mortar, punch you in the face, blood and guts leader. So the things that he does actually do affect things in the real world right this second. And they are affecting things right this second as he's invaded a country uh, just shy of eight months ago. So I would say of all of the world leaders and people in the last hundred years, Perhaps Fidel Castro and certainly Vladimir Putin are the only ones that are in that realm of so important that everyone on planet Earth knows who they are and would know if they died. And it would affect things. I wouldn't even put the Dalai Lama in there. The Dalai Lama could die any second and it really won't affect anything. Except for the lovers of the Lama. No offense to my Buddhist friends out there. But it won't affect world events. So... That's the kind of caliber person, caliber human Queen Elizabeth II was in of like, oh, that's why it's such a big deal simply because of the name recognition, the cachet of the royal family that, that uh, the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom is the way I like to pronounce it, was a global power, was the world global power at one point. And during their height, the global power United Kingdom controlled territories spanning the globe. And it could be argued that it had the most expansive single empire of all human history because it did span the globe. The Mongol Empire, to me, still holds the record because it had an empire that spanned all of Eurasia, physically one contiguous mass uh, from what's now Japan and Korea and China all the way to what's now Eastern Europe and the Middle East. That was still, to me, the most significant single empire. Uh, however, even that only spanned, like, say, 11 time zones and was one big land empire. The British, at their height, controlled pretty much all of North America, huge chunks of the Middle East, huge chunks of Africa. They never took over China, but they literally controlled it. They had ports in Hong Kong, Singapore. They controlled uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Singapore, uh, India. I mean, that I, I'm now mentioning what are now world powers in big countries. And in the heyday, the British controlled and or outright owned all of that. So the reason I'm telling you this kind of brief history of the British Empire because that's why it's such a big deal that the figurehead leader of, of that empire dying here in 2022 has international impacts. Because when they controlled Canada, what's now the United States, uh, 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 what's now parts of uh, Latin America, uh, what Australia, New Zealand, uh, what's now India, what was uh, Pakistan, uh, 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 ports along uh, uh, China. When they controlled uh, big chunks of Africa, when they controlled all of this, people knew who they were. Uh, and the sovereign head of the UK was the sovereign head of all of those entities simultaneously. So what we mean by sovereign head, like the sovereign leader of a country, 
uh, like Joe Biden of uh, the United States, is the leader of a sovereign state called the United States. Uh, uh, Xi Jinping is the sovereign leader of this place, uh, of a sovereign state called China. They control that territory. Everyone who's a citizen of those countries knows who the leader is. Try to back yourself up in time 100 years ago, or uh, say 150 years ago, and try to understand that people who lived in parts of China, in all of India, all of Australia, all of North America, Canada, uh, uh, British Caribbean, all of these places would have recognized the queen or king of England as their leader, as the president, as the head honcho. So that's why the British, at their height, controlled so many different parts of planet Earth, so many different cultures, by the way, so many different humans in different parts of the, across all continents and cultures. That's why even now, 100 years later, it's still kind of like, oh, well, of course we know who the king is or the queen of England is in Hong Kong. They used to be our president back in the day. Uh, and there are, is something called the Commonwealth countries. I'm sorry, what happened? And there's something called the Commonwealth countries. Uh, and again, if we make a quiz about this, if you guys want a quiz, that's fine. Or I can just take your names down and give you points. I don't give a shit either way. Uh, the, um, the Commonwealth countries is something that's outlasted uh, even the British Empire. So again, 100 years ago, the British Empire controlled all this territory all over planet Earth. Again, the ones I keep pointing out, uh, the U.S., Canada, Australia, India. I mean, that, those four alone, that's a lot of territory and a lot of people. Uh, and so at their height, they controlled all that, right? And the sovereign, the sovereign head, the queen or king, was the leader of all that. And little by little, over the last 100 years, 150 years, a lot of those colonies or territories threw off the yoke of British ownership or British control Namely, i.e., ergo, see also the American Revolution, right? <laughs> and other revolutions like that that said, no, you're not in control of us anymore. So, uh, you know, do keep in mind, it was only a couple hundred years ago that the American Revolution occurred that said, no, 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 we're kicking the British out. They're not in control of us anymore. But lots of other countries that took a lot longer. India, as you know it, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, as you know it in today's world, were still territories of Great Britain up until 1947. That's not that long ago. Many countries in Africa were still parts of Great Britain until the 1960s and 1970s. That's not that long ago in the historical spectrum of things. So again, why am I saying this? Because many countries threw off the whole uh, idea of being part of the British Empire a long time ago. I'd say 200 years for the Americans and other countries followed suit, but not all. And so it wasn't until World War II that the enough countries had pulled away from Great Britain and become independent. And then World War II, which almost decimated Great Britain and saw the end of Great Britain uh, because Hitler's design was to take over all of Europe, if not the world. Uh, and they barely survived that. All of us did, but Great Britain and the rest of Europe barely survived the Third Reich. And so it was th at that point that the British Empire was just not powerful enough to even be called an empire anymore. They still did. But they had lost enough territory and they were broke at the end of World War II and destroyed. And so at that point, we're entering what we call the modern era. And I just saw that uh, ag, 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 ag generic underscore name one just subscribed with Prime. Hitter M uh, Hitter McGee just subscribed with Prime. Thank you for subscribing. I, I've done one podcast this month and you've subscribed to it. Thank you so much. Uh, and I see a lot of hearts that people are following. Thank you for the hearts that pop up on my screen. My heart is going right back to you. So uh, for those uh, for you younger folks, uh, 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 i.e. students. Uh, to understand the modern world, you really start looking at World War II as kind of a sentinel point where we say, okay, now we're entering the modern world. Uh, and for those of you that don't know dates of anything, that's fine. I'm not much of a history person myself. 
But 1945 is the end of World War II. Call it 1950. Call it an even 1950 is when the modern world really kind of starts. And in that era, 1945, I just told you already that India, Pakistan, Bangladesh became independent in 1947. It was big countries like that post-World War II that started to say, hey, why are we part of this empire that's not even an empire? And so the, the Brits kind of at that point coming into the modern era started to give up illusions that they were in charge of these other far-flung colonies of theirs because people like uh, uh, people in India were Indians and they're like we are not part of British Empire we are Indian why are we pretending to be we're part of another country uh, and so they were suing for independence and they got it in 1947 and again many African countries that were either British colonies or French colonies, by the way. The French had way more colonies in Africa than the Brits did. That feels like a test question if you want one. The, the French had way more colonies in Africa than the British did. But the British, we're talking about Britain. So the British colonies at the same time in Africa and the Middle East were saying, why are we part of this thing called the UK? We're not. We're independent countries. So po post-World War II is when many other countries around the world in Africa, the Middle East, uh, uh, South Asia, Southeast Asia, started to pull away and say, we want to become independent. And they did. Because it's that point that the monarchy, uh, under Queen Elizabeth II, started to say, hey, this doesn't make any sense anymore. We can't pretend like we're in charge. So you uh, have a, a, a the United Kingdom, the British Empire, lose more territories. However, this brings me back to what I was ranting about about 10 minutes ago. You have had something called the Commonwealth countries that have persisted. So after a slew of countries gained independence from Great Britain after World War II, the modern era, uh, you had many countries who said, well, we don't mind particularly maintaining our status as part of the greater commonwealth of countries under the British crown. They don't no, we don't really call them colonies anymore. Uh, but you should know that there are a bunch of countries that still say, no, we're independent and we're sovereign states here in the modern world, but we're also part of the Commonwealth countries, which means that we recognize that Queen Elizabeth II and now King Charles III, is the actual sovereign head of our state, even though it's a figurehead. Now, let's name some of those countries right here in 20 Double Deuce. Can anyone in the chat room name me a country that recognizes Queen Elizabeth II and now King Charles III as their actual sovereign head of their state? Even though, if you look at a map of countries on the planet Earth, they're independent, what we would call sovereign states. Go in the chat room. Tell me some countries around the world that still recognize King Charles III as their sovereign head. A first-time chatter from J.R. Piv says England. Well, England is actually part of the United Kingdom. <laughs> I'll, I'll circle. Oh, that's okay. Austra Canada still recognizes King Charles. Australia recognizes King Charles. Shaman says India. No, Shamans. No. No. India became fully independent in 1947 and does not recognize. They, I think they play in the, maybe some of the Commonwealth Country Cup games, uh, like cricket, because who the hell else plays cricket besides the damn Commonwealth countries? But no, they do not recognize King Charles III as a sovereign head of their state. Uh, I see Canada, New Zealand, no. New Zealand is also independent. Australia, yes. Oh, is New Zealand. New Zealand does still recognize. I take it back. I stand corrected. New Zealand recognizes King Charles. Uh, uh, Elongton says, how about the South Sandwich Islands? I would say yes. I think the South Sandwich Islands are actually not a sovereign state. I think they are still almost officially a colony of Great Britain. So I don't know what their political status is. They're not a state. They're not a sovereign state in the, in the modern world. And so they do have strategic ties and maybe still counted as a full-fledged colony of Great Britain. St. Lucia uh, says Aiden 8164. I will agree with that, although I'm not sure. Jamaica, yes. Jamaica still does. Uh, the Bahamas, 
Yes, Bahamas still does. The uh, British Virgin Islands still does, although they're not a sovereign state. They are actually a colony, I think. Again, it becomes more uh, 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 muddled in today's world because colony has a pejorative slant to it. So I don't know what the British Virgin Islands is. I think it's a territory. That's what it is. The South Sandwich Islands and the British Virgin Islands are a territory of uh, Great Britain, much the same way that I believe Guam is a territory of the United States. Somebody, somebody Wikipedia fact check on that. I think Guam is a territory of the United States. What's Puerto Rico, by the way? I don't even know. Uh, a great Greg just subscribed with Prime. Bam. Thank you, great Greg. Um, Aiden also says Solomon Islands. Uh, I will agree, although I don't know. When we start to get to these specific islands, I don't know whoever owned them. Tuvalu sounds like maybe it was British. Yes. Belize, actually, I don't. Is Belize in it? Belize became a sovereign state, but they still. Katie's saying yes. South Africa. I don't think South Africa. No to South Africa. No. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> South Africa ain't having it. Gesundheit, Katie. Uh, first time chatter from Anika231, who said South Africa. I don't think South Africa uh, believes as an independent state, but does does still recognize King Charles III. First time chatter from Falafel Waffle. <laughs> Bermuda. I think Bermuda's not a sovereign state. I think Bermuda's a territory. Bermuda is a territory. Territory. Oh, we're only missing two, Katie says. Katie's keeping up with this. Hitter McGee says the United States. That's it. That's the one I was looking for. The United States still recognizes King Charles III. Uh, uh, no, no, that's a joke. Don't write that down. Thank you for that, Hitter McGee. That's hilarious. St. Kitts and Nevis. I think yes. St. Kitts, well, St. Christopher, St. Kitts, same thing. So, yes, they're actually a sovereign state, and they still recognize, and they're part of the Commonwealth. We're missing the one directly north of Australia. Where directly north of Australia. Katie says we're missing one directly north of Australia. Uh, well, that's Indonesia, Papua New Guinea. Yeah. There you go. Papua New Guinea? Yeah, Australia. Get the hell out. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Wow. I mean, Jessica Cage pulls out the quote, Guam is an unincorporated territory of the United States of America governed under the Organic Act of Guam. Ooh, that sounds delicious. I want an organic, can I get an Organic Act of Guam for dessert and an espresso? That sounds delicious. Uh, thank you for that, Jessica Cage. Boom. If Je I think Jessica Cage has already graduated, but if she's in this class, she just earned five points for the organic act of Guam. Uh, J.R. Piv says Tasmania. Tasmania is actually a sub-state of Australia, and Australia is part of the Commonwealth and does recognize King Charles. So indirectly, you're correct, uh, J.R. Piv, but that's like saying uh, Virginia recognizes the president of the United States. Of course they do, because Virginia is part of the United States. Tasmania is part of Australia. Uh, Alapay says we have an NWS in Guam and PR. There you go. Call Blamo. I love doing group think here in the chat room for office hours. It's way better than you all listening to me pretend like I know all this stuff, because I don't. First time chatter from Chris Consigil says Antigua Barbuda. They are. They are because I was going to bring them up in a news story. If they're not part, of, yes, they're part of the Commonwealth. They're not part of the they are part. Katie's looking at Wikipedia and Wikipedia is no, wrong. Wikipedia. I'm literally on the Royals website of what a Commonwealth is. Damn it to hell. I'm just telling you right now. Because uh, one of the, the reason Granada I. Is who? Granada. Granada. Granada is also in the Commonwealth. I'm just telling you, hang on, look and see if I can get into my New York Times account from here. This is this is knowledge in action right here, my friends. Uh, let's do this. Queen um, Caribbean. I saw this story and I've lost it. I can't. I saw the story several days ago. In the wake of uh, no. Hang on, where's my other computer at? I got the story open. Hang on. There it is. 
Commonwealth Secretariat did not actually. Katie says Antigua Barbuda is somehow different, but I'm counting them as part of the same. I'm telling you, it's for the purposes of what I'm talking about, they're the same. They are part of the Secretariat. Commonwealth. They're not actually officially for the people who say they are. Okay. Well, it, all right. Well, here's my friends. Here's why I was going to rant about this tonight, and I'm going to call Katie out. So we have, we have to figure this out. So the story that I'm looking at from the New York Times, uh, and the story is called, With the Queen Gone, Former Colonies Find a Moment to Rethink Lasting Ties. Which was why the subject line of what I sent out for this office hours is, a queen dies, dot, 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 or is it a system that's dying? And I'm arguing that it's a system that's dying. And in this story uh, from five days ago, on Saturday, the Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda announced plans to hold a referendum on becoming a republic within three years. Jamaica is having the same debate. Everybody's kind of been holding their cards out of respect for the queen. Yes, and this is a test question if you guys want to test on this. Barbados exactly, oh, I'm sorry, not exactly, over a year ago, about a year and four months ago, Barbados, which used to recognize the Queen and be part of the Commonwealth, voted in a referendum to become completely and officially null and void a true independent sovereign state and did it stopped recognizing the Queen. And Antigua and Barbuda, uh, since the Queen's death, has said, we're going to hold a similar vote. And Jamaica has gone back and forth for years saying, we should probably ditch the whole Queen King bullshit and become a full-fledged st sovereign state in our own right. Uh, how it's taken Jamaica this long has mystified me because Jamaica has been resoundingly and proudly and defiantly independent even when they were a colony of Great Britain 200 years ago. So that's why I'm getting my blood pressure up because we're now starting to split hairs. All these areas we are talking about are either officially in the, the Commonwealth or have been in the Commonwealth or, or territories of uh, the Commonwealth. They have something to do with the Commonwealth. So we're splitting hairs. Antigua and Barbuda are getting ready to hold a referendum to say that they don't want to be part of the Commonwealth anymore or to recognize the Queen and King anymore. So they obviously were something, Katie. I don't know, again, what official site you're looking at. Just go look up the British government and see what's their status of Antigua and Barbuda. What do they call them? There you go. So how could I too go and be Barbuda be voting on a referendum to get rid of the king and queen if they're not even listed on the website? Who the hell knows? I'm telling you they were part of the Commonwealth, or they are part of the Commonwealth, uh, but they may not be for long. And again, that's the whole point of this rant tonight is this looks like, to me, the death knoll of constitutional monarchy, at least for the British. Because you heard it here first, Jamaica will not recognize King Charles III for very much longer. Antigua and Barbuda will not recognize for much longer. And then you can start to go around to the globe to the places we've outlined and start to think, well, how much longer are these other countries going to do it? It really is um, an intriguing proposition. And maybe some of you have been asking the question in your heads, maybe not. Uh, a shout out to my name's Jeffy. My name's Jeffy just subscribed with Prime. Thank you, my name's. Uh, uh, Aiden shouted out St. Vincent and the Grenadines. They're also like Antigua and Barbuda. I think they recognize, but they must have some different status. But they definitely recognize. Uh, X Souls Born says, I saw that Australia's want to put Steve Irwin on their currency instead of King Charles. <laughs> Oh my God, Exxon is born. How do you even know who Steve Irwin is? You must be as old as me, which means you're ancient. You cannot be a current student and know who Steve Irwin is. Uh, but that's a delight. Thank you. So uh, the question for the many of you may be having is, what's the big deal? Why, why in the modern world, if Boyer just told us since World War II, even before World War II, many former British colonies had revolutions or kicked the British out, i.e., see America. Uh, and then since World War II, many other countries have also said, no, we're not being part of the British Empire anymore, uh, i.e., see Hong Kong, India, Pakistan, 
um, South Africa. Uh, so actually, South Africa was Dutch. Uh, but there, there was other uh, British colonies in Africa who said, no, we're not doing that anymore. Uh, even Belize, uh, which used to be called British Guyana. Uh, they said, no, 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 we're, we're not doing this anymore. We're going to become independent states. So if so many of these countries from World War II to present were kind of getting rid of the system anyway, why did this system called the Commonwealth even exist? Why did it exist? Um, and the answer is, well, old habits die hard. And the British were an empire that was very powerful at the time and did a lot of horrible things. I don't know, see the slave trade and shit like that and enslavement of whole continents of people like India. So they did lots of bad things, but at the same time, they over, over time, uh, they crafted this kind of culture of, not conformity is not the right word, but a common culture, let's call it. So... The common culture of all the British colonies, former colonies, and even current independent states that used to be British colonies, they have a common culture. Uh, namely, they mostly speak English. Uh, they mostly are Christian. They mostly are democracies. They mostly follow the, uh, the kind of standards of law and order. They mostly have political systems and economic systems like capitalism. They mostly do things the way that the Brits did for hundreds of years. So it's a common collaborative culture type thing that people have ties to that. And so they're like, well, well yes, we're, yeah, we're part of the team. It's team, team. We were part of the team when the team is strong, was strong back in the day. Uh, and even though the team broke up, even though the band broke up, we still love the band. We still listen to the music. That's a good analogy. The band broke up, but we still listen to the music. So they, a lot of these Commonwealth countries have said uh, for decades now, well, the Brits aren't what the Brits used to be, and they're not an empire anymore. But, you know, we still like the band. So they, uh, they did it because of the common culture. However, let's be frank, there also were benefits that accrued. Uh, and even back in the heyday of the British Empire with slavery and colonialism and, let's face it, racism and all the other bad isms uh, that prevailed on planet Earth under the British for hundreds of years, there were standards of living that were raised in far-flung places on planet Earth. There were monetary benefits that accrued. Trade, being a trading partner, even if you were a colony and basically you were being pillaged and used, it still set in motion trade relationships that lasted even after you became an independent sovereign state. So let's pick on, oh, let me find a country, uh, Ghana. was Ghana was a British colony, I believe. Uh, I'll pick on Ghana or Belize or let's go back to Jamaica. Um, or India, any of these places, they might have been completely used and abused and had all these horrific things happen to them for hundreds of years under British colonialism and imperialism. However, once they became independent, not like everything got fixed, but they had trade related, they had political and economic ties with a significant world power. And those are things that just don't disappear overnight, okay? Uh, we can even look at the American Revolution. I mean, the Americans openly fought a war and killed British people to get their independence. When America became independent, the very next day, they were still trading with the British. We were still selling them shit tons of tobacco and cotton. I mean, that didn't go away, and we bought shit tons of tea from them. So the economic and political ties and even military ties that were formed during the British colonial era don't just go away. And so even post-World War II, where the British played upon common culture, uh, played upon a sense of even patriotism. I mean, the British, for those of you who don't know this because you weren't alive, neither was I, but I know it. Um, it feels like a test question. The British during World War II, when they were being attacked by the Nazis, we're calling on people from India and Pakistan to come and help. 
saying, hey, you're part of the Commonwealth. You're part of the club. Come help the mother country. And many uh, people from around the planet did. There were people from the Caribbean and South Asia and East Asia and Australia who came and helped fight Nazis on behalf of the British. That kind of, it's, it seems bizarre to say patriotism, but that's what it was. If you were part of the British Empire, it was a sense of patriotism that held people together. And that type of culture dies hard. It doesn't go away overnight. And so that's what's lasted even since World War II, when a lot of those countries that even helped the British during World War II finally said, okay, enough's enough, we're out. But they still had this kind of cultural tie. They still spoke the language. And in case of the Commonwealth countries, they still played cricket and soccer. Those are things that the British introduced. And many colonies in, say, the Caribbean are Catholic or at least Protestant because Christianity was brought there. Uh, and English language was brought there by the British. So that's that's a powerful thing. Again, I don't want to be dismissive and say, life under the British in Jamaica was great. No, it sucked. But it's those ties of culture that bind over time that is the reason why here in 20 Double Deuce, Jamaica still recognizes King Charles III. I mean, if you just look at the modern world, if you, look, if you just look at the 21st century and you looked at this on paper and be like, huh, Jamaica recognizes that King Charles III is their leader. That would make no sense whatsoever because any logical person would be like, what? Why? They don't really trade that much anymore. They don't really do anything anymore. Ah, but Jamaica plays cricket. <laughs> India plays cricket. And so it's those cultural ties that bind over time and have lasted over time. Although... They've gotten much thinner. They've gotten much thinner over time. So even after World War II, even before, but even after World War II, there was still that cultural stuff that bound those Commonwealth countries together, uh, even as some became independent. Uh, uh, and, and don't dismiss popular culture, by the way. I'm making fun of cricket because it's easily made fun of. It's a game no one on planet Earth understands except British people and the Commonwealth countries. But they have clubs and they have whole tournaments and leagues across planet Earth where the old Commonwealth countries come together to play this one freaking weird game that the British introduced to them 200 years ago. And again, that, that ties people together. But the thing I'm trying to get at is economic ties also lasted for a very long time too. So the economic ties before countries became independent of Great Britain was pretty one way, meaning they were being used. Uh, the British would come in and, uh, and control a territory like Ghana uh, 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 or Belize or take your pick, India, and say, hey, uh, we're going to take all the raw materials we want from you and we're going to take them back to Great Britain and process them into more expensive materials and we're going to force you to buy back the expensive stuff. It's a very abusive system from the colonial standpoint. Uh, but even when India becomes independent, they're still trading with Great Britain because those long-established ties are still there. So a, a lot of the reasons why Commonwealth countries, particularly small ones like Jamaica, Antigua, Barbuda, Barbados, uh, what do we say, the Solomon Islands, other ones around planet Earth, the reason they stayed as part of the Commonwealth is culture, but also economically, the Brits were giving them kickbacks. So, you know, Jamaica was still a big sugar producer for a very long time. Uh, and sugar became actually quite cheap in the middle to late part of the 20th century. It became industrial. Sugar used to be a very expensive commodity. It became so cheap that it became worthless. Even go into the Kroger right now, you can buy a pound of sugar for a buck. It just doesn't cost anything. But it used to be big business. Uh, and so Jamaica, being a former colony of Great Britain, uh, they were forced to grow sugar back in the day when Great Britain was in charge. And because of that, even when sugar became cheap and Jamaica became independent, Great Britain still said, you know what? We'll keep buying your sugar for 2 or $3 a pound because we like you, because we forged these ties, because we have this historic tie that we used you guys for so many centuries. You know what? We're going to keep buying sugar from you, even above market price, because we kind of owe you. Uh, that was a relationship for many of the former colonies of Great Britain for a very long time. 
Uh, feels like another test question, though. But that even that started to end. And that started to end because Euro, uh, the UK joined this thing called the European Union. If anybody remembers that, back when the UK used to be part of the EU, uh, that they forcibly ejected themselves out of several years ago. But when the United Kingdom joined the European Union, the European Union said, wait a minute, you're now part of this block, and this block has rules about trade. And you can't give favorable economic conditions to somebody that everyone else doesn't get a fair shot at. So Great Britain, you can't pay Jamaica $10 a pound for sugar. No, that's against the rules. If you're going to pay them $10 for sugar, you have to pay French producers $10 a pound for sugar. And then Great Britain's not going to do that. So these were beneficial economic ties that were made with their former colonies. Uh, that they actually had to give up many of them because of joining the European Union. And now I'm suggesting that's why the relationship over time with the UK and its former colonies got thinner and thinner and thinner. And so the benefit of being part of the Commonwealth started to dry up really here in the 21st century, which is why countries like Barbados just a year and a half ago said, what are we doing this for? There's nothing in it for us. Why the hell are we recognizing this 90-year-old woman in an, uh, on an island uh, that's 2,000 miles away from us has nothing to do with us besides history? We're not getting any great economic benefit out of it anymore. So we're just not doing it. Boom, and they voted to not do it. That's bringing me back to point. Uh, that's bringing me back to the end of this lecture because it's already been an hour of why am I suggesting the death of Queen Elizabeth II, which we've not talked about her personally at all, because quite frankly, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, she's a lovely woman, I guess, but I never met her or partied with her. But it's not so much the death of her that's a big deal, because the United Kingdom is no longer a global power anyway. They're a nuclear power. They're still a significant regional power, but they're not a world power player anymore. They're not an empire anymore. And so the death of Queen Elizabeth really affects no one except that, and you heard it here first, a lot of the former, or I'm sorry, a lot of the uh, uh, Commonwealth countries that are still in the Commonwealth are likely to start pulling out now because it was, you know, it, it's kind of like, oh, you got to go visit granny, right? Well, I... I love Granny. Granny's senile, and I hate going to family reunions, but Granny's still alive, and she's like 110, so you gotta go. She's still alive. You gotta go to the family reunion. Oh, wait a minute. Granny died? I'm not going to the family reunion anymore. See, I'm the master of analogy. I just made that shit up on the spot. Your 110-year-old great-great-granny just died. That was the only reason you were going to the family reunion. It's over. It's over. So you're going to see a lot more of the Commonwealth countries who are still in this gang probably start to say, we're not going to the party anymore. It's time. I, I look for Jamaica to go first. In fact, I'll put down drinks on me at Wine Lab if this doesn't come to pass. I believe Jamaica will vote for independent, full independence and uh, get rid of recognizing Charles, King Charles III inside of six months. You heard it here first. Six months are gone or all drinks are on me at Wine Lab. They'll go first. Antigua and Barbuda will probably be right behind them. And that might, I won't say it's a domino effect, but a lot of other countries will either say, yeah, this is, why are we still doing this? We look like geeks. We're the only ones still showing up for the family reunion that no one goes to. Uh, you're going to see a lot more countries start to pull out or, or renegotiate. Uh, so a lot, a lot of countries, perhaps even like Canada, Australia might go to the Great Britain and say, hey, dudes, you know, tradition and that, da, 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 and all this stuff. What are you going to, what have you done for me lately? As Janet Jackson used to say, why are we in this club? Uh, and either we, either we get something more tangible out of this or we form some sort of deeper economic ties or we're not doing this anymore. This looks ridiculous. This is the 21st century and we're recognizing this goofball king 
uh, whose main claim to fame was he divorced this lady named Diana that everybody loved. That's the only reason anybody even knows this dude's name is because he divorced somebody who people liked. So I don't see how much longer the constitutional monarchy of Great Britain is even going to last. And by the way, there has been a, a long-standing chapter of uh, British people who have said, why do we even have this monarchy? For God's sakes, is this not the 21st century? So there's a group of people within Great Britain who are like, let's vote to get rid of it here, <laughs> much less uh, uh, other former colonies. Well, it's hard to interpret the word king for that. Yes, there's lots of folks like, he ain't my king, I didn't vote for him. <laughs> Always reminds me of the Monty Python skit near the beginning of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, <laughs> where uh, king, uh, <laughs> king Arthur approaches some, guy, uh, some people making mud pies and he's like ah, and they're like who are you he goes, i'm your king well i didn't vote for you <laughs> you don't vote for a king excalibur was given to me by the lady of the lake and that's why i'm your king uh <laughs> it's a great clip if you don't know what i'm referencing go watch king arthur uh, of monty python and the quest for the holy grail so uh yeah it looks like constitutional monarchy may be perhaps on the ropes in Great Britain itself, but for sure there's going to be a lot more Commonwealth countries who opt out of the club here in the coming months and or years. That's what I was going to rage about tonight to you, and that's what I did rage about tonight. And I see that Dr. Knockers has given me a whole bunch of comments up here that I missed, who says, I'm the man. Thank you, Dr. Knockers. Uh, they can't respect King Chuck. <laughs> uh, 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 Agenerick says, I can't imagine views of the Queen is dead by the Smiths exploded on the day of the Queen. Oh my God, yeah, I forgot about that. Good call, Agenerick. Good call on the Queen is dead. That's a good song. Um, pass the duchy. <laughs> uh, Cleopor says, that movie was awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Cleopor. Only here for the pod, only here for the podcast. Welcome back, only here. So I just saw this. Glad to see you back online. Hoping for more podcasts to come. Me as well. I've been exceptionally lazy this semester. And by that, I mean exceptionally busy doing other things. And so I've been exceptionally lazy getting back to doing class stuff. So I hope to remedy that soon. Uh, uh, Jessica Cage says we need a Prince Charles sticker. Yes, we need a Prince Charles. I'll put. Plaid Klaus on this. Plaid Klaus needs to make stickers. Generic. He is a generic human being, but we'll put a crown on him and it'll look funny. Uh, well, we'll find out. Well, she said a sticker. So we, we need to make more stickers. Like we need an emoji, yes. Uh, uh, a generic says good album too from the Smiths. I agree. Uh, we need a plaid drone, Dr. Knocker says. I actually have a drone somewhere. I bought a drone like 10 years ago. I don't even know where it's at anymore. It was a good one back in the day. But we do need a plaid drone. Okay. Is there anything else that uh, we needed to rage about uh, uh, here of, uh, going on in the world or about uh, Elizabeth II's passing? Uh, I'm now opened up the Wikipedia page, which is the Bible of truth on planet Earth. Uh, and... Um. Elizabeth II was Queen of the United Kingdom and other Commonwealth realms yeah. so from 1952 until 2022. Our uh, founders members of the Commonwealth Kingdom. So they were members yes. who are part of the realm, who they... Members as part of the realm. Her, she saw their role to retain the top few volunteer member states and then they ceded them. Got it. So she was the Queen Regent of 32 sovereign states during her lifetime. And still... 15 at the time of her death. So uh, when I was saying, yeah, lots of countries uh, opted out of this whole system and became full, fully independent sovereign states in the modern world. So 32 at the height uh, of her reign, and now there's still 15. So you can do the quick math. 17 countries, st sovereign states as we call them. There were 17 sovereign states that since she took over in 1952 pulled away to become completely independent. And if she took over in 1952, I already now told you it like 10 times, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh pulled out in 1947. So those don't even count as ones that were already gone, uh, but at roughly at the same time period. 
So that that's the uh, life and death, mostly death, of the British Empire has been uh, since World War II. Uh, and those 15 countries that still recognize her, they're completely independent and sovereign, uh, but they still tip the hat, so to speak. Uh, they certainly aren't in control. They're not being controlled by Great Britain. They are, out of respect, defer to this figurehead uh, sovereign in Great Britain as their figurehead sovereign, but it, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, at all, except that I guess they get front seats at the funeral. Beats the hell out of me. Called the loss of the nation was a voluntary 56. 56 countries are voluntarily in the Commonwealth Club. Mm, uh, yeah, and again, it's mostly for cricket. It's mostly for cricket and, and partying, and which I'm fine with. Were British colonies. There you go. 95% were former British colonies. She reigned for 70 years and 214 days, the longest of any British monarch and the longest recorded of any female head of state during all human history, as far as we know. Anything recorded, she was the longest standing female head of state. I think uh, that probably the only person or persons that might have beat her for longest head of state is... Who was the Sun King of France? That dude was around forever, too. And there probably were some Chinese emperors who became emperor when they were like two years old and ended up living for a very long time. But it's not many. Uh, and that's why it's a big deal. Good. And that's that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Dr. Knocker says, can you... Uh, comment on the Saudis pulling back in oil production, inflation coming back for our midterms. Oh, yeah, inflation's coming back for sure, uh, Dr. Knockers. And the Saudis pulling back on oil production. I, I've heard, I've not read too much about it, but I've heard that there's some intriguing things happening between the Saudis and the Russians uh, because the Russians are now so desperate to dump oil on the market because the Europeans and Americans and all their allies are not buying Russian oil. So oil is actually becoming cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And so when oil becomes too cheap, how do you make it not cheap? You have other countries like the Saudis and perhaps even the Venezuelans and others who start cutting production. Uh, and, and it's the old law of supply and demand, as you people are well equipped to understand. Uh, if there's too much supply and the, the the market's being flooded, the price goes down. It becomes too cheap, cheap. And so the way you stop that is you all stop making stuff. You stop producing so that that commodity becomes harder to get. It becomes more rare. The supply shrinks. When supply shrinks, the price goes up. So it's not, it's not terribly shocking that the Saudis or any other oil-producing nation would start restricting their production right now because the Russians are dumping oil anywhere that people will buy it, mostly the Chinese, for a much lower price because they need hard currency. So that's not terribly surprising. And if you understand the law of supply and demand and how international politics and oil works, not shocking at all. In fact, totally predictable. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, here, uh, as winter approaches, you're going. The interesting things to watch is what's what are the Saudis and others going to do once fuel oil becomes much higher in demand as it gets colder, and that has everything to do with politics and nothing to do with the actual resource itself. So Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, uh, the United States, Russia. There's lots of countries that have tons of oil, tons of oil. We're not running out of oil anytime soon. Many of us would like us to stop burning oil, but there's we're not going to stop burning oil because it runs out. We're going to stop burning oil because we choose to not pollute our planet. Anyway, there's tons of oil out there. It's not a shortage of oil. What's going to happen is who strategically is going to produce it and how much are they going to produce it, all based on political alliances. So Western Europe is the only place on planet Earth that doesn't got no oil. Well, big region that doesn't have oil. So they're the ones who are going to be in a pinch when winter comes because they need uh, natural gas and heating oil because winter can get cold in Europe. 
And that that's the thing to watch. Will the Saudis start producing more oil in order to alleviate the pain that Europeans feel? Or will the Saudis continue to not produce as much oil in order to make more money in alliance with the Russians? That's the intriguing question to watch. Uh, which way will the Saudis go once it gets cold? That feels like a podcast title right there, too. Which way will the Saudis go when it gets cold out there? It's cold out there every day. What's that? A, uh, that's a movie quote. Don't forget your booties because it's cold out there. It's cold out there. <laughs> who can answer that one so uh any other questions before we wrap it up because it's happy hour for me ah elongton says groundhog day <laughs> the sun king louis the 14th i think it's louis the 14th the sun king that's the one i was referencing the Sun King, Louis, I think, had a longer reign. Uh, and Age Nurek says, Azerbaijan and Armenia recently started fighting again. What's up with that? Also related to tribulations within Russia. Russia's power is being challenged by the Ukrainians who are taking back more territory, right? Uh, and so Armenia is an ally of Russia. Uh, Azerbaijan grabbed some territory from Armenia about two years ago that it's been a constant feud. So you're seeing now a little tit for tat, a sideline conflict that's happening because Russia is now, I won't say losing a war, but Russia's penultimate power is being challenged by Ukraine. And so other entities are also going to push back against Russia and uh, against Russia's allies. That's what's going on down there. It's funny how I know this stuff. I don't even know how I know this stuff, but I know this stuff. Uh, it, it's mostly internal. It's mostly Azerbaijan and Armenia hate each other. But the timing is interesting. The timing of this con of that conflict starting back up right when Ukraine pushes back and demoralizes Russian military forces, the timing is intriguing. It's all about the timing of when these things occur. So that's what's going on down there, and that could be a future podcast as well. So I don't even know how many of you all are in class. If there's anybody who's actually in my class right now, I recognize a lot of screen names from uh, former class folks. But if anyone's in my class, I just assume just give you 10 points for being in this chat room right now. If you email me, it's 9.08. If you email me in the next five minutes, 9.08 to 9.13, and just be like, boy or dude, I was there, and give me your screen name. I'll give you 10 points just for being here. That's how I'm rolling right now, my friends. But for now, I think it's time to tune out because it's happy hour somewhere. First time chatter from Mark uh, I'm here. Mark, Mark Daggett says, I'm here. Uh, Aiden says, sick. Uh, the, the 25, the jaw says, thank you. Thank you, the 25. First time chatter from official, Sarcedo. official Sarado. I didn't say say it here. Hold on, first time chatters. Uh, uh, X Zayman. Yeah, we don't know your actual names. I said email me. Email me at J-O-B-O-Y-E-R at the VT.edu. Katie, can you put that in the chat room real quick? Email me and, and say I'm here and put your screen name in that email and I'll get you 10 points. I see officials. Sorry, give me your screen name, but actually your real name too in that email so I can track you down. And, and we'll be putting this in something called the crazy credit column, which we need to create right now too. So first timer from uh, X Zaman from Afe seven six F. Thank you, Ivan, for thanking me for the podcast. I know Jessica Cage is here. Uh, uh, Keisha is here. Cleopora is here. Snowies, I like that one. Uh, Chris Consigil, thank you. Angus says, "Can you fix my previous grade from a few years ago?" Of course I can, Angus. I can fix anything. Didn't get an A in my class five years ago. I can fix that. First time chatter from Amy's01. Uh, uh, and also first time chatter from Aver6. Thank you all. Uh, thanks for tuning into this stream. Hopefully you learned a little something. If you would also like, uh, I'll give, uh, like I said, if you email me in the next five minutes, I'll give you 10 points. If you want a flash quiz on this uh, and want more points, give me some questions from this uh, rant I just did for an hour. Uh, and I'll give you more points for the question, and then you can help me build the quiz that then you'll get points for taking the quiz too. 
I'm all about the people who are here in the moment doing it and helping out getting more points. So if you want to do all those things, then ba 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 do them. First time chatter from Matt51515. Thank you all for tuning in. You're too awesome. And we'll do it again soon. I think that we were trying to do Monday nights, but it's been a hell of a semester already. So we'll try again for Monday, which is just a few short days away from today. If we can survive the weekend and the big football game, because Blacksburg Wine Lab is going to get decimated and destroyed. So I'll be working there from now until Monday night. And Parents Weekend. We have so much work to do. Thank you all for tuning in and Godspeed to you all. Hope you're having a great semester. We'll see you on Monday, if not before. But for now, as always...